fears that we sometimes have in reference to evangelizing and things. And so I'll, I have to ask a question because when you go back to the first century church, especially in its, in its infancy state, these were individuals that they just did not care what was coming upon them. They didn't. They, they were so strong, they did not allow their fear to overtake them. They allowed themselves to be so built up individually, spiritually speaking, that they were willing to die for the faith. They, they weren't allowing anything to get them down. And so I want to ask the question, what was the whole deal of how they were able to get over that and to be in the state that they were in? Well, it all goes back to Acts chapter 2. I want you to turn your Bible there real quick with me. In Acts chapter 2, after the, the apostles, Peter basically being the lead spokesman in all this, preached that powerful sermon in that the things you are hearing were not drunk. He said that what was spoken of by the prophet Joel, now this is what's in your sight. This is what he's talking about. Now, this is the fulfillment. And on top of that, he starts talking about the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord. And he convinced them twice of saying, listen, you by waving hands have crucified and slain the Son of God. You did this. Now on top of that, in verse number 36, after they heard this last time where he says, therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus whom you crucified both Lord and Christ. Verse number 37, this is what took place. And now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said, Peter, men, and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men of bread, what shall we do? And then you start seeing here how he goes on in here in verse number 38 where we know so well to repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. He shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promise is to, is to you and to your children and all who are far off as many as the Lord our God will call. You all of a sudden go all the way down here in verse number 41. After they were told in verse 40 to be saved from this perverse generation, then those who gladly received the word were baptized. And that day about 3,000 souls were added to them, and they, being those who were just converted, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking the bread and the prayers. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all these who believed were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. And they continued daily with one accord. See that? And you start seeing here really the whole makeup of really the fearless type. The ones who were able to jump over all their hurdles, spiritually speaking. All of their physical fears. All of being able to stand where they needed to stand and just do what they were needed to do. It all began with first being cut to the heart. Brethren, that's the same step that we need to have today. If we are ever going to overcome the hurdles, in our spiritual life. We've got to be able to have a heart condition that is able to be moved, to be cut, to be slain. Why? Because the more slain that's taking place, guess what happens to you? You start going down. Right? And that's where we need to find ourselves. We need to find ourselves spiritually on our knees. Right? Until we find ourselves in the status of understanding our place, understanding that the decisions that we make are really not our decisions, if we're going to be pleased to God, we need to be standing on God's truth. And once we overcome that, you know what you'll find ourselves doing? You won't have any more hurts. Why? Because you'll be the person that God wants you to be. And so with that being said, it might be the case that tonight you never obeyed the gospel. And this might be the biggest hurdle that you'll ever have to do. Okay? This is the most important decision ever in your life. Right? So with that being said, are you ready and willing to take that leap? Are you ready to say, listen, I'm ready to step up. I understand where I'm at because even if you're in the loss of a safe condition, right? If you're not in the safe, let's be honest with you.
Bible says, right? We're lost. There is no gray area. There's not any straddling of the fence saying, hey, why well, can't we do both? No. It's not the way it works. If we find ourselves in a lost condition, do you understand that if you are found in a lost condition, now this can be a category of an individual that's never obeyed the gospel, or an individual who has obeyed the gospel that's set away from the truth. Okay? Being in a lost condition, the end result is hell. And it's nothing of an annihilation is what religious people say. It's not something where it's just going to be a little poof, right? If that be it, I can see where people can say you can live any way you want, okay? Because if I can live any way I want and only spend it uh, hell with this little poof, Thank you. 